There must be some kind of way out of here Say the joker to the thief There's too much confusion I can't get no yeah, relief Were you always an atheist or did you ever believe in something and then came to change your mind? How did your development uh, play out? You know, my family was traditional Methodist religious, you know, not aggressive, not fundamentalist, but, you know, <clears throat> we go to church on Sunday kind of bullshit. Um, but they weren't aggressive about it. <clears throat> but, yeah, I can think of no moment in my life where I believed in God. I mean, I did the pretend, you know, okay, God, I'm talking to you now. Do you hear me? And, you know, I got no answer and, you know, gave up on it. You know, because I said, well, I'll play the silly game because maybe I'm wrong, they're right. Um, but I had a huge advantage. I, I was a skeptic from the day I was hatched. I mean, the first day, I, the first conscious moments I remember were skeptical moments, just saying, where the fuck am I and what the hell's going on here? And then everything I saw just verified that people didn't know what the fuck they were doing because they didn't have answers to any of these basic, just fun basic questions. You ask them how we got here or what happened or this, that, and they give you bullshit answers of, well, God knows what's best or some other vacant nonsense. And I found it, you know, it's like the Santa Claus story. As soon as you, and then when you catch them in the lies, you know, when they start lying to you, it's just so easy to discount everything comes out of a grown-up's mouth. So, yeah, I never yeah. could fall into anything because I never was, um, I, I just didn't have an ear. They didn't own me, so, so to speak. Was it, was it that the, the adults around you were irresponsible liars that eventually drove you not to believe in God, or was there some other reason? No, they were irresponsible liars. They were traditional, typical liars. I mean, you ask them why somebody dies, and they say it's God's will. Well, to me, that was a fucking lie. That's not an explanation. It's a lie. It's just as stupid as Santa Claus story or the Easter. I'm just saying there was lots of stories they were telling you, and they were all bullshit, the happily ever after nonsense. And you knew right away that didn't happen. That's not the way the world works. So the metaphors were already, already wrong. And I guess I would add to this conversation that it's important because this, the, the, the tradition is what stifles intelligence. It's, we're all, you are all stuck in these archaic ways of looking at your existence. And you, haven't, you can't even bend them enough to start realizing what the full implications are of the fact that there is no intelligence behind the universe. And it is just mechanical processes working themselves out based on what they're what it what is possible to happen. Well, I'm and, I'm, and, I'm a bit of a skeptic myself, believe it or not, Gary. And when I look at this me mechanistic model of the universe, you know, I put it in its historical context, and I see that you know it may very well be. I think it probably is just a passing fad that it's been foisted upon us. This cosmology of a mechanistic universe to benefit the economic situation that we happen to be in. If we think of nature as a machine, it's much easier to exploit it for its resources. Um, <laughs> face palm. <laughs> so I, mean, so really. I think that this, this is just a socially constructed myth. Just like, you know, there, there have been myths in the past that the universe is, you know, designed by this, uh, you know, very specifically described uh, intelligent being who judges people and sends them to hell and so forth, and that's just as much a myth. But, we call it scientific today, but it's no less a myth. Because we really don't know what, how the universe, you know, we have this Big Bang Theory, we don't really know that that's true. There are all these other empirically observed facts which don't fit into the Big Bang story, but it's the best story we've got going at the moment, so I, I accept it just as the best we can do right now scientifically, but there's still a lot of gap, or there, there are many gaps that are filled in by myth that allow us to construct this mechanistic cosmology. So I'm skeptical that it's actual fact. I think we need to keep developing our knowledge of the universe and, and acknowledge all the information and all the facts that we have um, when we try to construct a cosmology. So Yeah, I guess, I guess that depends on what you call a fact. And so I've disputed some of the things you call facts. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's any, any, any indication in any evidence that's pointing to anything but the me mechanistic, all right? I mean, the DNA molecule and its objective to reproduce itself through evolution, through the process of natural selection, is just irrefutable fact. You don't have to go back to the Big Bang to find the unintelligent design. You can find it just four billion years ago. 
All right, but if you want to go back to the Big Bang, fine. But whether it's an oscillating universe, whether it always existed, whether it's collapsing, and who cares? Yeah. Does it, does it mean anything to the fact that by you know chemistry acquired the capacity to reproduce itself, and now it became biology? Well, okay. okay. And biology has a consequence. Sure, sure, but this me this mechanistic view, um, which I agree with Matt, it's it's this it's this meme that's been kind of perpetuated through consciousness through the human experience and it needed to be there this rational mechanistic meme to kind of uplift us out of the uh, the dogmatic myth of the old ages of the sky daddy right that's it's had its time is what we're saying and there team seems to be a new type of review of the of the universe the cosmos us included in a more organic way. And here's the difference. A mechanism. Right, right. The sky everybody, unicorn. Who was it? Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to give you sky daddy explanation the sky to unicorn. it. Well, That's I'll take Gary. I, we let you, let you, I'll just talk. But this mechanistic view, uh, you can take a, you can reduce things down to the parts and then reconstruct it back, and that's what makes a machine a machine. You can, but when you do that with an organism, when you take away the parts and try to put it back together, it's, it's different. They're, inter they're always interconnected. So this more organic view, we're actually more interconnected, whether we like it or not, is, uh, I think, and I think Matt, safe to say, is, is the more, uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's the way it's, we should be going. We should lean yeah. towards, we well, should wean off the mechanistic reductionist view to the more organic and interconnected view. <clears throat> and that's kind of phantasmagorical for you. That's, is that where you draw the line? Real quick on phantasmagorical. Well, well, it's well the word organic, oh, let's go back to the word okay, organic. Why should I celebrate? anything that's got the word organic in it. Well, Nature has organic. no intelligence. Nature just wants us to reproduce. So what the hell? Why do I want to go back to being organic? Nature sounds like a god for you, though, Gary. I mean, the way you, the way you describe it. A, the, a devil, but with, with all these... It, it's in control. Well, is, ignorance is, the, is, the ignorance is scary, and nature has a big, giant pile of ignorance. It creates without having a brain. All right? It's, you know, the worst Frankenstein monster. Frankenstein without any brain at all. So, actually, you believe in God just without a, an intelligence, Gary, is what you're saying. Ah, uh, well, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> if somebody can interpret it that way, then they don't have a brain. Okay? Well, if they're going to interpret what I just said the last whatever minutes <laughs> as, as some advocation for a God theory, then they have no brain. Thank you for the subtle uh, uh, jab, but... Well, like, you know, like uh, Professor Anton has put it, that everyone is theological. Everyone who thinks critically about their existence in the larger universe is theological, even an atheist, because they're responding to arguments for God with arguments against God, but still their worldview is fundamentally related to some picture of God. You know, you define yourself by saying, I don't believe in that God, but that's still a form of, of theology. It's almost as though atheism is the natural evolution uh, of the Christian story because God incarnates into the material world and and so then the material world becomes the ultimate rather than some heavenly realm so you know atheism isn't necessarily uh, completely doing away with theology it's just a further evolution of, of the same uh, theological uh, development <laughs> process <laughs> Well, I mean, why don't you just throw words right in the garden? Why don't you just throw the word philosophy out and we'll just replace the word philosophy with the word theology then? If you're going to make no distinction between what we discover through disciplined science and what we discover through undisciplined nonsense, walking on water and serpents, you know, canes turning into serpents and training toads and all kinds of other nonsense. And sorry about the mic. Um, you know, what, what, what's the point of doing that? I mean, you want to call it theology? Okay, fine, go ahead, but it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Gary, there's been a lot of ambiguity, ambiguity around the um, word phantasmagorical. Can you um, explain the kind of difference between a, a theologian or, or, a, or someone who practices <laughs> theology and someone who practices phantasmagoriology or... Uh, so can you give us some kind of context where you're coming from on the on the phantasmagorical crowd versus the theists? Is there so, is there a difference for you? Are they is there a categorical kind of you can see that's why you classify them as different kind of thing? Yeah, well, I'd almost say the phantasmagoricals are more guilty than the religious. The religion came out of two thousand years ago when we were ignorant of everything. The last two hundred years, we have learned everything really valuable to know. We learned the substance in the last two hundred years. Uh, of the really important stuff. Um, and it's just so disappointing that people are 
but they just still keep going to run away from those 200 years of knowledge. They're going to run away from what the Darwin and Einstein, and they're going to, and they're trying to go back to the same. But they're trying to reinvent astrology, and so that's you know I see it as more sinister in a way because now you have the intelligence to do better, but you want to go back to the old fables. You want to go back to the old nursery rhymes and try to make sense of them. You want to you're still chasing the happily ever after fairy tale. And it's just not going to happen. Well, let's let's look at the, this knowledge that you think we have that we've pretty much figured out exactly what the universe is doing and exactly what we want. Here I'm longer. Who feel that life was but a joke? But the